I got into composition through playing guitar and I wanted to be a jazz guitarist and that was going to be the big thing and I've played music since I was very small. Um, but as I picked up more instruments, I, I realised that I couldn't be as good at all of the instruments as I was at guitar. But I still wanted to be. Um, and so I became a composer. And then as I was doing composition and working with other media, so film and theatre and dances, um, I realised that I couldn't be as good at all of those as composition. So I started to become more of an artistic director and in that role I was able to be like a composer before all of these other disciplines as well and think about how they all work together to make one large project. Um, and I still, I still find live art and performance, um, I guess, more the most engaging, the most interesting for me as an artist, but probably also as a participant. Um, but in an effort to scale down perhaps budget and teams and to an extent time as well, um, video games is a pretty good sort of halfway point. <laughs> um, it's like a smaller version of, of live art and all of the disciplines that I wanted to use at once. So someone came and did an elective at my uni um, teaching music for video games and um, it was a really, really uninspiring and bad subject um, and it didn't work out and I got quite low marks in it as well. Um, but one thing they did say was um, join Facebook groups. I hadn't even thought about it at the time, but I did use Facebook a lot then. And so I joined a heap of local Facebook groups for local meetups, and things like that. Um, and there was a call out for students to come to this small short course over winter that would be about game design. Um, and it was pay what you want, which is really important for me at the time because one, I didn't know if I was invested in video games. Um, and two, I didn't have any money to invest um, to complement any emotional investment. So um, that was really helpful that that happened. The other sort of big entry point into there, to that course, was that I didn't have to be a programmer. Um, I also didn't have to be a game designer. Um, and afterwards, or also when I got there, I realised that most of the people there were already designers and were already artists um, and were actually studying games. Um, but the content within the course as well um, came at games from such a broad perspective that I felt quite included and I felt that um, my work was very valid already, which looking back on then um, was really convenient, you know, and it doesn't happen a lot now as well. Um, as you introduce yourself or as you enter communities now, often you're asked what games have you worked on um, and yeah, it's it's more of a you introduce yourself with your CV, yeah. Which I mean, now I've, I have the CV to back it up, but I still hate it, and it's a little bit. Um, it's it's as if they don't want you in their community. They you know there's already a barrier to find that the community exists um, and say hi to someone, find the leader of the community. Um, but then for them to ask, what have you worked on? What do you do? It's a little bit like, oh, okay, um, right. Like, do, do you want more people or? Yeah, I don't know. Um, that happens more now. Yeah. And I'm privileged enough to be able to say, no, I don't want to be part of those communities that I feel have um, barriers of entry.
Being fortunate enough to go through this course, which had a focus on the interdisciplinary nature of video games and really working about what are the design choices between disciplines that make up video games. Um, and uh, also just games in general and not just video games, um, though the course was focused on screen-based games at the time. Um, or at least that was what was most impactful me, for me. So that course went on to become a bit of a collective. We all really got along and as people left, others came to replace them as well. Um, and it was predominantly designers, artists, programmers um, for video games and not people who were not in games. Um, and even thinking about in games, um, the people who are in games are still predominantly video game people, um, whether it's in the in wider industry or whether it's in any of the communities that are a part of it. 